The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. Warm greetings and welcome to a very special edition of Tomorrow's World. Dr. Roderick C. Meredith, Tomorrow's World presenter and presiding evangelist of the Living Church of God, spent the majority of his life, over 64 years, preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, the same message you hear each and every week on this program. Many of you have followed Dr. Meredith on television since he first appeared on the World Ahead program back in 1995 and later our Tomorrow's World program that began airing in 1999. It was his life's mission to get the true message of Jesus Christ and His coming kingdom to as many people around the world as God would provide. Dr. Meredith was instrumental in founding the Living Church of God, the body of people behind this work, which now has more than 350 congregations in 55 countries around the world. Sadly to all of us, Dr. Meredith is no longer with us and died peacefully on May 18, 2017. He was 86 years old. We here at Tomorrow's World and our faithful group of members and co-workers everywhere loved him dearly and will always have fond memories of his service and the work that he did for the living God and his church. Before his death, Dr. Meredith appointed longtime evangelist and fellow Tomorrow's World presenter Gerald E. Weston as his successor and presiding evangelist of the Living Church of God. In this special telecast, we would like to give you a glimpse of Dr. Meredith through the years on television. He recorded more than 270 telecasts since that first program in 1995. Let's take a look back over the years as Dr. Meredith faithfully preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and the coming kingdom of God. Please sit back and enjoy this special program, Roderick C. Meredith, A Life of Faith. In this first segment, Dr. Meredith shows how God's Word reveals the real purpose for mankind that many do not know today, but also how evil men, imposters, and Satan the devil will deceive many at the end of time. And now, in our special tribute telecast, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. My friends, most people on this earth live and die like dogs. They have no reason, no understanding as to why they were born, where they came from, or where they're going. Science cannot give us the answers. It does not know. And most people, most theologians don't even know as a matter of fact. But there is one source, a most neglected source. Most people read about it, talk about it at times, read it for inspiration. It's called the Holy Bible, but they don't understand it. They don't really study it. They don't read it carefully like they might do other books, but it does give you the real answers, answers that most of you have never understood in all honesty. You need to know and you need to understand to grasp your future. You and I have been given life and breath for a supreme purpose, which very few understand. Are you personally willing to learn your purpose in life from the Bible, the inspired Word of Almighty God? Perhaps you're prejudiced against the Bible. That's understandable. Some of you have been misled in the past. So we'll open our minds and hearts today, I hope. Open your mind and listen. Prove what I'm going to say, for I'm going to give it to you directly out of the Bible, and I want you to check up on me. I want you to prove these things. Go get your Bible if you have one. Check up on me. Prove what I have to say. Be sure that you believe what you read in the words of your Bible. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into man, or into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. People haven't even begun to grasp what God has in mind for you and me in the future. It's awesome, and we need to deeply appreciate it when we come to understand it. 
A true Christian has to stand for something. And if you're willing to stand for something and stand for the God of the Bible and do what God says, God will bless you. But he says, all who desire to live godly will suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers, evil men and imposters, as this version has it, I'm reading out of the New King James Version, and I sometimes quote the Old King James by accident because I'm so used to it, uh, talking here, of course, from the heart. Evil men and uh, imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It doesn't say the world's going to get better. It does not say there's going to be a great revival of true religion just before Christ comes. Frankly, everything says there's not. There's going to be a revival of paganism. There's going to be a revival of a great false church system that God calls the great whore, but not a revival of true Christianity. And you've got to know the difference. The time is coming when your very life may depend upon it. And I hope that you will prove what I say. Then many false prophets will rise up, another wave of false prophets apparently, and deceive many. Again, not the few, but the many. And because lawlessness, the whole attitude of just breaking laws that we find sweeping through our society, lawlessness will abound, the love of many will wax cold. But he who endures to the end, the end of his life, or the end of this age, will be saved. No, you're not saved, presto changeo. You've got to grow in grace and knowledge. Jesus said, he that endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the coming kingdom or government of God to be set up on this earth will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come, the end of this age. So let's really understand that, my friends. These things are going to happen, and you are now hearing prophecy fulfilled because I am preaching to you the kingdom of God, the coming government of God to be set up on this earth under Jesus Christ. What happened to true Christianity? How did it get off the track? How did people take over the name of Christ? And what happened? Notice 2 Corinthians in your New Testament. Notice 2 Corinthians and turn here. Read these verses with me if you would. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Paul writes, I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, and Satan the devil is very crafty and cunning, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He knew this would happen. If a man comes along and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, a whole different attitude and approach which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Chaotic world conditions are becoming the order of the day. The world is close to financial meltdown. You know that. The ups and downs of the stock market, various governments in terrible financial trouble, all this kind of thing is getting worse. Why are we having this kind of national tragedy increasingly, this kind of breakdown? Why do we have to wake up to headlines like this in our newspapers? School massacre. Why are these things occurring? Is it because we have turned away from the true God? because we do not understand his laws, his ways, his commandments. As God deals with human beings and as God works out his purpose here on earth, he's not worrying about the rotation of the earth and the rising and the setting of the sun from our earthly point of view. He's concerned with thousands of years and sometimes in his sight, a thousand years is as a day. And we are now in the latter days, believe it or not, just before the return of Jesus Christ, the Christ of your Bible, as King of kings and Lord of lords. We, the American and British descended peoples, are the descendants of the so-called lost ten tribes of Israel. And we are part of the people that are going to be dealt with by God in his prophecies. Therefore, many of the ancient prophecies of the Bible are talking about us, the prophecies about the house of Israel, and in dealing with us, Almighty God is working out this purpose over a period of many, many years. Stay tuned for the next segment of our special tribute telecast with Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. But first, to order today's free inspiring offer, The Mission of God's Work, a powerful DVD compilation where dozens of ministers of Jesus Christ explain the reason and purpose for God's church, Simply call the number on your screen or go online to tomorrowsworld.org. Here now is Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. How real is God to you? 
Have you proved to yourself that a real God exists, a great spirit personality that's in charge, that intervenes in human affairs, and that his word is inspired? I have proved that. I'm basing my life, staking my life on that. I hope you are too, but prove that if you have not. Prove that the Word of God is inspired of God, that this is God speaking, this is God's instruction manual to mankind. Jesus Christ is described in Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The main thing is faith in God and what God says. No, healing is not limited to that kind of thing. For the Jesus Christ of your Bible is alive. He's sitting at God's right hand. Christ can and will intervene to heal if we put our faith and trust in God and in this Word and the promises of this Word. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thank God for that. His healing power and His direction preaching the gospel is the same as it has always been. As He comes back to this earth, Christ will crush this revived Roman Empire and all the various trappings that it has and all of its ways, which will turn even more wicked than they ever were before. Notice Revelation 11 now and verse 15. The seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He, Christ, shall reign forever and ever. These are not kingdoms up in heaven. These are kingdoms here on this earth. He takes them over, and Christ returns before these rebellious rulers would literally destroy the entire earth. And so the angels praise God about that because Christ is coming just in time. At the time of the end, my friend, there's going to be a great false church, a great antichrist rise up, as we discussed last week on this program. But there's also going to be a true church of God, the little flock, and it is going to be persecuted, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, Jesus Christ told that church. Would God be fair to eternally torment or to burn alive a person whom he himself allowed to be deceived, and yet Satan has deceived the whole world? What kind of merciless God would that be? Do you believe in a God of mercy, a God of wisdom, a God of fairness? Only through the name, the authority, the power, the office of Jesus Christ may men be saved. Even the Sodomites, the pagans of past centuries, are going to understand in the day of judgment. Again, it is vital to understand that this is Satan's world. It is now under his influence. He has blinded most human beings. They have been deceived. That's the answer when you really grasp what God says in the Bible. My friends, the Jesus Christ of your Bible specifically describes a soon-coming holocaust, but most of you have never heard about it. In the mainstream church I grew up in, Bible prophecy was seldom, if ever, mentioned. Most of you are in the same boat, yet the great God who inspired the Bible devoted about one-fourth of the entire Bible to prophecy. Yes, one-fourth of this book is describing prophetic events telling what is going to happen before it happens. That was important to God. He devoted one-fourth of this book to prophecy. God has a way of life, and mankind has rejected that way of life. That's why we're having all these wars and suffering. We will walk in His paths, for out of Zion, from Jerusalem, the law shall go forth. What law? The Ten Commandments, my friend, is talked to as the law, talked about as the law, I should say, all the way through your Bible. The Ten Words, the Ten Commandments will be the very basis of the whole way of life. And Christ expounded those Ten Commandments in Matthew 5 and all the way through the Sermon on the Mount. He never did away with them. He simply showed us we're not only not to kill, we're not to hate, we're not to commit adultery, we're not even to look on a woman to lust after her. He made them all the more binding when you understand. So obeying the Bible is the key. Obeying this book once you prove that it is the Word of God, doing what God says. Turn to 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. John writes, Whatever we ask, we receive from Him. You see, we get our prayers answered. Why? Because we keep His commandments 
and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So we've got to keep the commandments. He's talking about the Ten Commandments throughout this book, not some other commandments. It's very obvious. He quotes from some of them. Keep the Ten Commandments and do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. So do this to assure yourself that your prayers will be answered. Think about it. Obey God. What is happening to professing Christianity? There are now over 500 denominations and sects, all calling themselves Christian. Mainstream denominations are now beginning to ordain all kinds of deviants. Mainstream denominations are saying virtually nothing about adultery, about fornication, or unmarried people just living together. Do they think that sin actually still exists? Do they even believe in sin? My friends, what is genuine, authentic Christianity? Can we prove what the original Christianity of Christ and the apostles was actually like? How can you genuinely overcome Satan and his demons? What is Satan planning next? And what should you be doing about it? God says through Jesus Christ in John 17:17, 17, 17, Thy word is truth. Yes, the Bible is truth. We've shown you on this program that there are dozens of big prophecies that have already come to pass, affecting the major nations and major cities of this world. God speaks through this word. Let's understand that. This is the only source of understanding the spirit world. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You have to fill your mind with the Bible to overcome Satan and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the only offensive weapon you have. Praying always, that's the key, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Constant prayer, supplication, as it indicates, constantly coming to God in prayer, praying always. Stay tuned for the upcoming segment with Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. But first, to order today's free offer, The Mission of God's Work, call the number on your screen or go online to tomorrowsworld.org. In this next segment of our special tribute telecast, Dr. Meredith explains how Jesus Christ will return to set up the kingdom of God here on this earth. And now, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. And greetings, friends. Welcome to Tomorrow's World Telecast, where you will gain prophetic insights and information available nowhere else. Have you been deceived by Satan the devil? Don't be too sure, for God's Word tells us that the vast majority of all mankind is deceived. The Word of God clearly describes the coming beast of revelation and the great false prophet. This will be Satan the devil's final effort to deceive you and influence you to turn away from the God of the Bible. Notice what your own Bible says. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. This is talking about the revived Roman Empire, which God directly predicts will come up again at the time of the end. And on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. This system is beginning to rise up right now, and you need to watch and pray and understand. It will be the most power, powerful, world-controlling empire that has ever existed. And it's going to be replaced, though, you need to understand, by something even more wonderful and powerful, and that is the kingdom of God. This world needs right government, and Christ is coming back as king of kings to bring that government. Thank God. Who is the prophesied Antichrist? How will this man affect world events? My friends, prophetic events are now beginning to occur with increasing rapidity. This final Antichrist will arise soon. Get ready. Most of your friends and loved ones will be deceived. What about you? For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Please get this one key thing. Listen carefully, my friends. 
they do not confess Jesus Christ as coming present continuous sense. He is now coming. Yes, he did come 2,000 years ago. Yes, he will come back as king of kings, but he is coming. How is he coming? He's coming through the Holy Spirit to live his obedient life in you and that the world does not understand and the Antichrist to deceive people from being willing to understand and obey that and follow the logical implication of that. He is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an Antichrist. Are you willing to actually study your Bible to genuinely understand the spirit wars now beginning to be waged? These things are real and they are going to happen more and more in the next several years, my friends. May God give you the understanding and the faith and the courage to act. My friends, you need to be preparing for your real goal, the real goal of true Christians, eternal life in the soon coming kingdom of God. Soon as this world comes apart, as people turn away from God, as they break God's laws, as these nations of this world begin to go down and all kinds of things are going to happen that we have prophesied in this work for generations, as you know, you older people who've watched us and heard us, Christ is going to come back and save the world from itself. We will have the opportunity to assist our Savior, the coming King, Jesus Christ, in bringing genuine peace and joy to this sick, warring, mixed-up world. May all of us, my friends, be inspired to surrender to the true Christ of the Bible. Follow this program. Read Tomorrow's World magazine. Study these booklets we send to you. Begin to meditate and study God's Word and to pray fervently for Christ to come again. Jesus said, pray, thy kingdom come. You need to act on the truth, not the hearers of the law, but the doers of the law. As God says, they're the ones who are blessed, who act on the truth. I hope you will act. It's coming, and it's coming soon. Oh, yes, I know that people like to make fun of the idea that the end is near. Very funny. But I urge you to watch world events as Jesus Christ commanded. You, my friends, will begin to see the very pattern of world events unfolding which your own Bible describes as the time of the end. These events will quickly happen, and they will happen unexpectedly. We are going to have to flee. That is, God's true people. There is a place of safety on this earth. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those with nursing babies in those days, and pray that your flight, you see, there is a time to flee to safety. For in those days there will be tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of creation which God created until this time known nor ever shall be. The greatest tribulation since God created man on this earth. Do you get it? The God who inspired this book, the Holy Bible, tells us clearly that the very greatest national tribulation in all human history will occur just before Christ returns. And you will find him when? If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. If you personally wake up, if you personally go all out to genuinely seek the God of the Bible to do his will, then he will hear and he will answer. And that's what we'd better do now ahead of time if we want to avoid this coming thing that's coming on us and be taken to a place of safety to seek the true God with all your heart and with all your soul when you're in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, our time. Understand, my friends, this is for us. So many other scriptures show it means an end time event as well as an end early partial fulfillment. In the latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, you need to believe that Jesus Christ is alive you need to believe that he is now the living head of his church and his work today, that he really has a work that is doing his work, preaching his message, and proclaiming the inspired prophecies for these last days. You are right now in touch with that work. Think about that. You're right now in touch with that. Jesus said here through Paul, continuing in chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. It's going to come very quickly. 
For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. People in the world don't understand. They don't believe this book. It's very unreal to them. God is very unreal to them. This thing is going to come on this world as a great shock because they don't know God, but you can know God if you seek God with all your heart. Jesus Christ said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. This book, my friends, is the inspired revelation from Almighty God to mankind. I prove that and know the know that I know that. I hope you have. It reveals what God really thinks. It reveals what God promises. Give your life to God. Believe this book. Do what God says. Walk with God and put your faith and trust in God for the God of the Bible is very real. Our reward is very real if we really do give our lives to God and obey Him and serve Him. Believe that. These things will happen. Stay tuned for the final comments from Gerald E. Weston and Richard F. Ames. But first, don't forget to request today's inspiring and exciting free offer, The Mission of God's Work, by calling the number on your screen or by going online to tomorrowsworld.org. And now, here's evangelist and Tomorrow's World presenters, Gerald Weston and Richard Ames, with their concluding comments. We hope you enjoyed this very special look at the work our beloved friend and colleague, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith, did over all these years on television. Mr. Weston and I, and our other presenters, Wallace Smith and Rod McNair, hope to continue in the same tradition as Dr. Meredith. What an incredible example he set for all of us. That's right, Mr. Ames. We are so thankful for the life, the work, and the dedication of Dr. Meredith. We can look forward to God's soon coming kingdom and His promise that a new world, tomorrow's world, will be coming to this earth soon. Unlike so many other religious programs on television, this one will never ask you for money. We're here to provide you with precious information regarding your incredible future and God's eternal promises. If you are curious about our mission and the group of faithful Christians who support this work, we'd like to offer you this free DVD, The Mission of God's Work. This film covers the sevenfold commission of the Living Church of God as taught by Dr. Roderick C. Meredith and Mr. Herbert W. Armstrong in the modern era. It will give you a glimpse into the mission of this work from faithful ministers who span the globe in service to God and His people. Pick up the telephone right now and order this free DVD. You can also order it online at our website, tomorrowsworld.org. Thank you to everyone watching who has supported this work over the years. May God bless all of you as you seek His precious truth. We'll see you right here next week. This has been a presentation of the Living Church of God.